Next on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, Jonathan goes into the ocean with the world's largest shark. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. I've journeyed to the warm and shallow waters of tiny Holbosch Island in the Gulf of Mexico to find and film the world's largest fish. Holbosch is barely more than a sandy speck on the map at the northern end of the Yucatan. It's not your typical tourist destination. Until recently, this sleepy island wasn't much more than a fishing village. There are no paved roads, and everyone gets around in golf carts or other non-conventional transportation. The highway here is a stretch of beach where you can hit maybe 20 miles an hour if you have a fast cart. Downtown, this island has the charm of a place not yet discovered by throngs of tourists. But everywhere, there are signs. Something special has been discovered here. Offshore in the cool waters of the Gulf of Mexico, a giant lurks. I get up early to meet the boats to take me and a few other intrepid snorkelers on the adventure of a lifetime. All right, let's go find some whale sharks. Instead of catching fish, these former fishermen are now making their living taking tourists to swim with a fish, a really big fish. Using a GPS receiver to help him navigate, the captain takes us about an hour offshore. Our guide, Andreas, watches the water with a carefully trained eye on the horizon. Soon we pass a pod of dolphins. They circle the boat a few times to check us out, then vanish. Then we come across a group of eagle rays frolicking at the calm surface. I've never seen eagle rays doing this before. I'm not even sure what they're up to. But after a few minutes, we have to move on. We put the boat back in gear and keep looking. A ripple up ahead catches Andreas's keen eye. As we approach, we find a giant manta ray feeding right at the surface, mouth wide open. Mantas can reach 20 feet across, but this is just a small one, only about the size of a car. Finally, Andreas spots what we're looking for, the huge head of a whale shark sticking up out of the water. As we pull the boat up alongside the shark, I can see its massive mouth open and funneling water in like a gigantic storm drain. The shark is feeding. But what could it be eating? It's more than 30 feet long. What could feed such an enormous animal? To find out, I don my snorkel gear and hop over the side. The whale shark passes right in front of me. The water is not very clear, and this is where I get my first clue what is going on here. The sharks have come to this section of the ocean because it's filled with plankton. Whale sharks might be the biggest fish in the sea, but they eat only plankton and small fish. The word plankton comes from a Greek word meaning drifter. So plankton are drifting organisms like these tiny copepods. The water is filled with copepods, jellyfish, and other drifting animals. 
They might be small, but these planktonic animals are all food for the mighty whale shark. Early in the morning, when the water is calm, the plankton forms a thick layer near the surface. He's just surface feeding. What the whale sharks do here is they swim across the surface of the water with their mouths open wide, and all that plankton that's sitting right at the surface gets funneled right into their mouths. The enormous mouth swallows up huge quantities of water. The water comes back out through the shark's gills, but comb-like structures in the gills capture the plankton like an enormous spaghetti strainer. So the whale shark swimming through the water is like a big pool skimmer filtering the plankton for breakfast. Each shark eats hundreds of pounds of food every hour. It turns out that eating plankton is very efficient for a large animal. Conditions here around Holbosch Island are perfect for plankton in the summer. The plankton makes the water really murky, but all that food attracts huge schools of fish. It's a bounty that feeds many kinds of animals. Manta rays feed on the plankton. But the whale shark is by far the most impressive animal that comes here. Reaching 50 feet long, whale sharks grow as large as a school bus. But they're completely harmless. All they eat are plankton and tiny fish. That is incredible. They are so huge. And there's so much plankton in the water that we can only see maybe 20 feet underwater. So they're bigger than the visibility. You can't even see the tail from the head. I can't believe how many sharks are feeding around the boat. There's so much plankton here that it attracts whale sharks for hundreds of miles around. Some of the sharks have escorts, schools of fish that swarm around them for protection. They too eat the plankton, splashing at the surface as they feed alongside the shark. But when I swim over to investigate, they hide under the shark as if it were a huge swimming reef. Free diving and keeping up with these sharks is hard work. They don't look like they're moving that fast. I mean, their tail is just, you know, gently swishing back and forth, but they are so big. That tail is so huge that they're actually moving faster than we can keep up with them. You swim as hard as you can for about 30 seconds and then you're pooped and you give up and off they go. Later, as the sun gets higher in the sky and the air gets warmer, the wind picks up and waves start to form. plankton layer dissipates and the sharks get harder and harder to find. They're diving deeper, out of sight. Once they dive below, we have no way to find them, so we head back to shore. My trip to Holbosch has been a tremendous success and a lot of fun. The economy of this tiny island has been transformed by this big, harmless, polka-dotted shark. Here in Holbosch, people love whale sharks and they're protected by law. And that's the best part of this story.